So can't live a life because of social my social anxiety and can't seek treatment because of social anxiety. So social anxiety is like kind of tricky, okay? So part of the reason that mental illness is so bad is because I kind of think about it almost like I think about HIV. So the reason that HIV is such a devastating illness is because it impacts your ability to fight back, right? So if we look at all of the illnesses, in most of them, you have an immune system that's fighting against the illness. The problem with a lot of mental illness is that we use our minds to fight back. We use our minds to adapt. Like if you look at like cancer survivors, for example, right? Like they use their mind, they're resilient, they seek help, they go see doctors, they like, if their mind is like working okay, like they, they will like go and like they can fight against the cancer because their, their weapons are still intact. The most devastating thing about a lot of psychiatric illnesses, like if you look at depression or social anxiety, is that they actually attack your ability to fight back. So the hardest thing about social anxiety is that it's hard to go get help. So this is where, you know, if you look at people, so I'm going to take a quick tangent. So there are like two personality disorders. One is avoidant personality disorder and the other is schizoid personality disorder. So in avoidant personality disorder and schizoid personality disorder, people are loners, but there's a big difference. So avoidant people who are also kind of on the social anxiety kind of bucket, in my mind, are people that want connections, but can't get them. And schizoid people are just loners. So they're actually like content being alone. So the tricky thing about social anxiety is that you want connections, or if you have avoidant personality disorder, if you're like avoidant, right? You want connections, but it's just really, really hard to get them. And that's just what's so devastating about it, because like, you know, you want the connection, you want to seek help, but you're so damn socially anxious that overcoming that social anxiety is like half the problem. So then the question is, okay, what do I do if I'm socially anxious and I can't get into therapy? And this is where the short answer is ask for help. So if you can't do something on your own, and by the way, if you want to think about one variable that correlates with success in life, I think it's the ability to ask for help. And so if you can't get a therapist on your own because you're too socially anxious, you know, I would say just ask for help. And then the people with social anxiety may come fire back and they may say, but like asking for help makes me anxious too. And that's where like, yeah, that's true. But this is where in my experience, even people with social anxiety or even people who are avoidant have some people that they can ask for help. There are some people that they can reach out to that they feel comfortable enough like asking for help. So it's something as simple as asking, um, you know, a friend of yours, like, hey, can you help me find a therapist? And even go to the first appointment, like with someone who's got social anxiety. So sometimes I'll have, you know, patients who will come to like their first appointment with me and they'll like bring a friend or bring a pet. Like, and they'll ask, you know, can I bring a pet? And sometimes I'll ha I, ha I have to say no, but depending on where I'm renting space. But sometimes they'll come in and, and then I'll say like, you know, if, if it makes you comfortable and they're, you know, you're okay with them like hearing what I answer about medical questions, then they're welcome to come in. Is it okay if I ask them to, to stay out for a little while um, or step out for a little while? So I, I'd say in short, ask for help from people that you're comfortable with. And there may be some amount of social anxiety there, but this is also where like, um, you know, the social anxiety you have to overcome to go see a therapist may be over here. But the social anxiety to ask a friend for help may be over here. It's still going to be present, maybe. And then hopefully you have like a really good friend that you feel comfortable asking for help and just ask for help. So ask them to help you, you know, like look through things, make appointments, make phone calls. Maybe you're comfortable doing all the research, but you're not comfortable making the phone call. I've even done that for family members and stuff where like I'll even talk to like I'll have some family members who are like very reluctant to engage in in like mental health treatment or some very close friends. And I'll make the phone calls for them. And I'll put it on speakerphone and I'll say, hey, I'll, let me make the phone call for you. So I'm going to call the number because like making appointments is not actually that hard, right? It's not like that difficult of an interaction. It's not like people are going to grill you. And so, you know, I'll make the phone call for them. And even, even in coaching, one of the, the things that our coaches are actually trained to do is to help people overcome their resistance and operationalize getting into therapy. So we even give the coaches like sort of a guide um, to help their clients get into therapy.
because sometimes coaching, you know, sometimes people really do have, while coaching can improve depression and anxiety, sometimes it appears that the coach can't really diagnose things, but they, they may really like notice, they'll be like, okay, it really seems like, you know, something's off here and you're having a lot of trouble getting out of bed in the morning. Why don't you get a mental health evaluation to see if this is depression? So they're kind of trained in that. So I'd say the short answer is like, ask for help if you can't do it on your own.